Um, it's six o'clock, so we'll call the Monday, August 16th, 2021 meeting of the Hyde Park Select Board uh, order. Um, let's see, and we have on, uh, someone's on, what do you want to identify yourself? We just have here in the little mark. Is it Danny? Is it Kim? How do you know that? Because so? Ron knows everything. Okay. There, there's no see. Oh, you're going to go to the little one. Oh, call her on. Okay. Welcome. Hey there. Hey there. How are you? So Cassidy's trying to get on, but she needs to call apparently. So okay. Oh, are you? Sure. Good. 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 <clears throat> Don't worry, all of us it came except the one on the end. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't think maybe both ends. <laughs> <laughs> you folks in the middle are okay, right, Dave? That's right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> um, let me see, because Nick's here. And and I don't have any changes in the agenda. They're just all about spending money. Yeah. Where's the part where we get from it's heavy, it's a heavy, <laughs> heavy agenda. This is a heavy spending agenda, isn't it? Um, how about? <laughs> I, I decided to print it all out. I quit. <laughs> lost it? Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm printing it out now. I figured that we lost out. it. Oh. Um, no. <laughs> Greater, shall we go? Yeah. Okay. Why don't Why don't we so we so we don't take up more of this time? Even though we'd be delighted to have you stay as long as you want. Here. We're always We're always happy to have people here, um, because we go right into the to the highway department, um, and and this is well, actually, in part it it leads to I wanted, um. I wanted to say I uh, I hurt Brian's feelings this week, and I didn't mean to. <laughs> we were because uh, Brian has been doing well a lot of work on the, on the, on lots of these things, and uh, we we're talking about having doing a special meeting Friday to get this issue settled. And um, uh, and he called and said we'd try it and anyway through it. And it was a great example of communication is important. And if you only do three quarters of the communication, it, you know, it hardly ever works out the way you want it to. Because I had, in terms of calling a special meeting, particularly if, on, on really short notice, um, I asked Ron to check with the contractors to see if it made any difference to them if we did a special town, a special meeting. Friday that I was pretty sure at least several people wouldn't be able to get to or if it was okay to wait until Monday and the contractor said that was fine to wait until Monday and and if if I have learned anything being on a select board is there is no such thing as a simple road project it doesn't exist including just going out to grade them okay <laughs> a simple road project doesn't exist That's right and and when we and and again for me that i try to remember and it's something that i i frequently don't take and i don't think about when i ask ron a question or mark a question or Allie or kim a question um when when we decided to go and changing it and everybody agreed to grind it so it was a change in the bid and what it was going to cost and we asked Ron, you know what will that be and that sort of from our statue let it go well for ron and mark that literally is some hours of work that you need to put in to come up with a solution and i am definitely guilty of forgetting how much time a request can take from folks to get to to get to the answer, um, and it became evident to me that the grinding and what we do, and then the bids, and then the radical difference in the bids and the implications of, of everything, 
that this was going to be a better conversation and be better for all of us to be in the room and have all the information. And I really appreciate you coming to Nick and your Mark would be here. So we can all talk to each other and then hopefully get 100% of the communication instead of three quarters of the communication. But Brian assures me that we're still friends. Okay. That's, that's good. Um, so, uh, Ron, you want to give us sort of the, the background and how we got here? And then, Mark, have you jump in as well? And then, yeah, we, we did go and get three quotes for Center Road. It's 3.2 miles to reclaim the surface and get into some of the gravel that's below it. That'd be minus four to five inches, something like that. And then scoop up some of the underneath, which my kitchen. Six to eight inches, you know, full depth reclaim sometimes can go to 12 or more, but I think for this purpose, we want to make sure we have enough gravel mixed in with the asphalt so you can get a good compaction. Of course, Mark, part of that process is having some commitment from Mark uh, because towns typically have to make a decision on reclaim. Do you have the contract to do 100% of it? Or does the town crew help out? Maybe the contractor is limited on grader and you jump in with the town grader Maybe the town has good access to chloride, so we offer the chloride. In this case, the town's offered liquid chloride grading, and the contractors are doing the uh, grinding and compaction. Mm -hmm. and so and I thought in there, did I hear you say flaggers and tell them to do the flagging? Yeah, so we're going to close the road, but that leaves local traffic needing some attention to. So you can't have a 100% closed road without giving people some attention to get to their driveways. But that's not a full time flagging crew. That's people on site, whether it's the contractor or the town crew, helping people get to where they need to go. I can almost tell you that you probably need somebody the whole time at that place you shut it down. Yeah, so we're going to try to do the same thing we did with culverts, the north and south, that, you know, from town line to Cleveland Corners, and then have them move up to the next half. But there's a lot of houses in there. There's, you know, Mark's found that out today going to Sterling View. You know, it's constant traffic. You know, yeah. people just go into their houses. Yeah, but the, the, there'll be people that don't even live who go in. So, well, they, uh, so I can't, can't anticipate everything, but we uh, wanted to work with the contractor because of the short time frame. So however we work to make it happen, it's going to be all hands on deck. I don't think there's any way around that to try to get done in a couple of weeks. So Nick's uh, quote was low at 45000 BCI was second at 63,077 and Pike was 69,825. And Pike suggested that the, when they arrive to pay, which might be around September 15th, if all the planets align, could be longer if the weather turns sour, is they bid on a paved road even though it's patched and bumpy, they still bid on that. So they are expecting something that's ready for pay when they show up. They didn't have any reclaim or truing up the road part of their bid. So when they show up, that's part of the challenge. So let's say Nick is low bid, he comes in, he's awarded the contract, he comes in next week, finishes it, and then we have three, four weeks before Pike gets here. The road will immediately start to fail. You'll get potholes and wash holes and if it rains any more than minimal it's not going to be um, it'll be a high maintenance for the town crew to keep in good shape without getting a lot of complaints if it's perfect sunny day like this with the chloride locking everything in it might not be any problem at all well you don't know that but you're taking that risk for that three or four weeks somebody has to take responsibility for what they call the fine grading compaction before the paving so pike said which is, you know, take it with a grain of salt that if they don't get that piece, which is an add on to their project, and we have somebody else come back and do it, that their paving piece may lose its warranty because they can't take any, um, they don't want to take any responsibility for somebody else's fine grade. So at that, what it is. So that created another second issue, which is do we amend Pike's paving contract to include that? fine grade and compact just before they get here. So it's their project. They just have an extra fee for that little exercise. Does town highway do fine grade and we lose the warranty? Or do we hire Nick to come back again if he's the selected bidder 
to do the fine grade and compaction just before pike because there's coordination there. Some of these have to be really tight uh, communications with pikes. We don't leave it fine grade for three or four days and have it rain for those three or four days. And then we didn't do anything to the road. But, but, but with, with your bed deck, did that include the, with your Bible camper? And included the boy, yeah, boy grading rule. Yep. If that center road comes down anywhere like Finch Hill did, that thing is harder than the concrete out here. Finch Hill did a little more water. Too often the sand up that to put that white road. Just a thought, I'd be more concerned about laying good fresh pavement over the top of what's already crumbled and rumbled now than I would be a freshly repaved road that you've got some grade on. But we're not doing you have no grade. Yeah. Yeah. That we're not we're not talking about that. We're just talking about what happens from the reclaim whenever it gets done the first time. Mm -hmm. Can that all be done just before pike? Or is there going to be a little lag time between the reclaim and the pave? And the pave. So that's the question. So if your schedule, let's say your schedule doesn't get you uh I'm talking like he's been awarded, but uh, let's say the selected Ooh, contractor yeah. has yeah. to if it's not fine. can't get there before the 15th of September. They just busy, they have other things to do in the middle of September. So the town is in a position of amending the pipe contract for getting that compaction. And the 15th of November. 15th of November is the contract. 15th of September is the first soft date that Pike gave us. Pike won't be there. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't know. I've done a lot of that work. Randolph Road, Stagecoach Road, and everything. And uh, we always did our grading before. And the contractor that come in always rolled it. I, I, I don't know, but to me, if they don't want to warranty their work, I think we ought to go out and put it out for bidding. I mean, this is crazy not to warranty that work. Well, I, th I think they're saying they don't want to warranty it unless, because we've changed it, unless they know it's going to be good. It will be, I'm sure. Well, that's right. Your... We changed the scope. We changed the scope of work on them. So that changes their warranty, right? Sorry, this is Chastity. Hi, yeah. guys. Oh, right. <laughs> You're, that's just right. That's the issue they raise. So how do you deal yeah. with that? If they yeah. if you if town comes in and does the fine grade and you amend their contract to use the compaction, you know, let, let their roller do the compaction. That's probably going to be there already on site. Right? Hopefully, well, that's the way it's always worked for thirty some odd years with me. But it's still a contract amendment, though. That's what, that's one issue that has to be resolved. And then part of that contract amendment would be them certifying the warranty for one year. Nick, if you uh, <clears throat> if you're awarded this, what do you predict your flexibility would be to be able to come back and put a compaction onto it prior to the payment? So you can touch it up one more time in there, greater. We hit it again with the compaction. We'll do that a week before they get there, couldn't we? We'll come to that compaction. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got uh, we figure out. We should be able to do it in about six days. Have to clean the reclaim. Yeah, the reclaim, yeah. Yep. So if we did that early enough, and then you came back and a week before they get here, you touch it up, fine grade for the grader. We can hit it again with a vibratory roll. I don't have any about no, why can't we have one question? My question to you is, and I've run into this both ways. <laughs> How do you like the road when you paint it? Oh, I like it flat, or do you like the crack? I no, we like the crack. Okay, yeah. well, see, I've been. And I like it replay. Gorman, I mean, a... When Gorman comes in, they want it flat. Yeah. Flat. Flat. Well, I like the crack. We yeah. put it in with a paint. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's Gorman wait, wait, Okay, wait. wait like Gorman was there. Right. So, hey. what's the harm in asking Whitcomb for a confirmed date when they're going to show up? Everybody, anybody else has to. Pike? Pike. 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 Pike will be scheduling their work every week that goes by. They get closer to a commitment date for us because they have a big crew that needs to be scheduled themselves. Right now, they're probably, uh, that's, I was guessing maybe like 80%, 90% sure that they'll be able to do what they said. And then they always think that. 
they, you can't get a guarantee for them. So the only way that you can, right, right. the only way that you can do this is to have somebody like Nick know what the challenge is, or you know the crew, the plan talked about often, so you can just tighten that schedule up. That's the best you can do. I, you're, well, and then you're right. If Nick, I assume it's not illegal for for Nick and Mark to talk to Pike, so that you co no. can coordinate it, right? And it, it just be, really becomes a matter of coordination, I think. Well, part of your bid doesn't include coming back. No. So either way, there's cost to Pike adding it to their bid, to their current bid, or Nick amending the 45000 So somewhere there's going to be a cost in there anyway. Coordination issue goes away if Pike gets an amended contract, because they'll do it and they'll schedule their own crew. And, and you've got a battle roll ready. And they paid over that. Yeah, those options. Yeah, budget roll. I mean, I've never heard, heard that they wouldn't warranty the black. We got disclosed. I mean, I've had well, it, from what somebody else in the paper world being told where towns all messed up and degraded themselves and stuff because now something happened over well, point makers. Point yeah. makers. Whereas if you hire a flyer to say Manos can do everything, there's no way point makers. And this person's only you know, understanding a lot of down under greater, but they're taking that liability on themselves now. We don't realize it. Now we're starting. Yeah. Everybody's got it. Man, we went something. through with the culvert. Well, <laughs> you know. What about if you replaying and grade and then just come back? We can come back with a uh, the week before they come in. You grade again, and then we might Then you run it for traffic the whole time before you get there. And you might have to grade that. And that way, you don't have, I don't have any additional dogs. Since the traffic is not going to help, we're going to really come back. We're going to set up where we're going to have four lines. We're going to come back. We're all going to have the same type. So once that's paid in the yellow line, where's that yellow line at? And where those four for that one? You know, there's not enough traffic on there to be there. Like, we're 15 to get to be. You're gonna mm -hmm. have, you know, everybody's gonna be in their same wheel ruts. That would be compacted, but instead of done, we should build one. Let's go back to what we saw on the picture. All we did was buy that one. Yeah, that's all we did. Huh? It's <laughs> like they don't do that. You wouldn't have to tell me where it is. I know exactly where all that stuff is. Ian, do I have to separate you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Play on your that, that's not a bad idea. Mark, don't, don't if, if you just wait on the bike or it could be right, you know, you'd be right behind this launching line, this with the replay, with the grade. And then a week before bike comes in, you touch it up, flatten it out, and then we go over, we bike it right in. Then it's had road traffic, weather, and volume. Yeah. I mean, you shouldn't. I, I can't believe we get any better compaction because I love with a lay of road that was done that way than I would over the loose pavement that's up right now. What oh, business is all over the hips off you? Yeah, I mean, I he said he lost the cat today. Not a good move. Don't go up the line. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. uh, but, it's, but if that's in real, it's not going to cost the town any any extra on either, either right? Right, right, right. Just the order that we did. Good thinking. They, they, they can Thank coordinate. You. There's a not compact in the beginning. Not compact in the beginning. Just grade it right behind us. We're going to plot you six inches. We need to grade that compact. Sorry. Oh, the loose, loose material was pretty decent, baby. Thanks, Mark. This is the way we're two different people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to separate them. <laughs> I, I know, I think we're going to brag about it. Well, we've had a couple of years of this right here in the village, so we're all set. <laughs> <laughs> So it falls back onto the warranty, right? 
that's one aspect of it is uh pipe warranty yeah so I, I would manufacturers or vendors one year warranty is pretty standard you know for people doing work their clause out or their reason out can be anything so how how strong is the town's case that it's not a good like rule and say whatever we did is material to that warranty it still had a problem i don't i don't know i don't know the answer to that how do you get pike to say we are going to Extend that work. You, you dial the phone and you say to Mr. Foy, somebody else is going to reclaim it because they're 20 some odd thousand dollars cheaper. Your warranty it's not going to cover that. We'll get somebody else to do it. So you'll, I think I think I'll get it done this year either. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I might suggest a different approach if uh, I may. No, no, if they're calling you who else, you better call them. Yeah. No, let's ask Nick. No, Nick, if someone, if you had a project and another contractor came in before you and did something, would you still use the same warranty? I mean, I feel that's pretty standard reasoning for Pike. I don't think that's unreasonable that they're taking away their warranty. Because they're, why would they warranty Nick's work? That would be silly. And that's what, what they would be doing, right? I just want to ask Chastity, what is your warranty now with the road all broken up? They're saying their warranty. What is that warranty? Does anybody know the true definition of that warranty? Is it because it says they're the warranty in it, so it doesn't matter. matter. No, they, they well, they said they're they did a project right? with a one year warranty standard, and they're gonna apply four inches of pavement. That's what they bid on. So when they accepted, when they bid and the town accepted it, that came with a one year warranty. But they but they had whatever they did to get that bid. They didn't say their guarantees on their four inches of pavement. It has nothing to do with subsurface flow pavement. It has nothing to do with it. Their guarantee is with the four inches of pavement that they may have priced out to you to be able to do. That's it. Not the base below. Now I think they got a pretty good argument that the base below it. What they they, did they know that base. that base. They were on site. While they were on site, they got to look at that road. They know what they were up to. They know that they, when they came and were going to top coat that thing, that they were going to expect the warranty they were. If they had any concerns of warranty, that would have been expressed at that time that we're not going to touch this because it's such bad shape. So I think they felt pretty confident that that road was in good, relatively good shape for an overlay. So, so I really think that that if. Mark, Mark and Nick, if the three of them talk, I think we're going to be fine. I think they'll probably say, here's the plan, here's what we're going to do. Ask them, okay, does that work with you? If it doesn't, then we can have another conversation about it. But I expect that'll work fine. To, so, com to compact just before paper. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I think Nick came up or with a great suggestion. Or it's not. Or it's not. And we'll have yeah, it's to not. Keep rolling. Right. <laughs> Make a few phone calls. Right. But I don't, I I don't see why they, fine, I don't right? see why they wouldn't go for that. Yeah, after because I think you you're right. right. I think oh, they're going to be in better shape. Yeah. That, that's yeah. I have no problem with that. Yeah. But I'm going to ask a question. If you if you don't want it, I'm going to ask it on behalf because I'm a taxpayer. You're building in this house. I'm going to ask about it. You want to get the porches, baby, laying down, no matter what's underneath that. Right. Because that's a really serious question. And Chastity, you should know this. You've been in this business. If you don't have a good sub base, yeah. where are you pointing the finger then? Right, and if they're going to come up and say they're going to warrant it, they're going to have to bore it every once in a while to see what they're, they're saying. The town can't grade it by, and they won't warranty it that way. Yeah. Then how are they going to guarantee the broken up pavement underneath it, laying their four inches on it? How do they warranty it? How do they warranty it? They just warranty in the four inches, or is it going to be well? Now you're somebody you know, the, that that was all broken up, the water going to be there, picked it, lifted it, crossed it, you know, all it, all spider went. And so I, I, I ask that question. Well, okay, well, absolutely. And I think that, Ron, you've spoken in the past about uh, filling cracks and stuff like that. And I think you've taught and educated us on the fact that that crack, if it's not fixed somehow, will work its way up through eventually. And that road is nothing but cracks all the way up through it. Sure. So I'll give you a scenario. <clears throat> Our parking lot, Northgate Plaza, you drive into it. During the winter time, grew up at the summer, that's all heaped up. My father said for years, nah, I don't know. That'll go right back down the spring. And it does. Hutchins and Pike were both asked to bid that job. 
we were going to make sure you must grow in two inches off of that so that we know that we got something good underneath us before we'll be, we'll, before we'll be. And you're in here. So I'm going to bring that question up because I have the two beds that they gave us two years ago. And it's, you know, they either want to grind it or they want to break it before a repo. That's. I would not rather, I would pay them over that and say, I'm going to guarantee it. I wouldn't put that in my contract. I'll guarantee the four inches I put in, but I won't guarantee what's underneath it that I like it. Okay. If you can't guarantee the grading that you just did either. Right? They're saying they ain't going to guarantee to do good. What's the difference? Grading or just in big? To me. Good point. So I, I think you guys talking with them probably takes care of the whole thing. <laughs> and of course, we sort of need to back up and do a little formal thing like who are we awarding the bid to? <laughs> yes, if you want to take a motion on that based on that conversation, we can put the, right. put the project in. I'll make a motion. Has to. A second. Okay. With the discussion part, it, it also goes with what Nick had said about the compaction just before the the paper. We are. Yeah. 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 We can say nothing. Yes, sort of down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You're right. He's got a back call from second and then the employee in there. Oh, okay. So that's, that's true. Second. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm trying to wake you up. <laughs> okay, uh, we lost Chastity. She's there. No, no, I'm here. Oh, okay. All right. No, all right. I'm here. Okay, you got, got any more questions, Chastity? We good? Uh, no, I'm all set. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Anybody abstaining? Okay. Roll. Okay. Okay, now we back up to three acre stormwater permit. So we're all set, Nick. We're all set. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you want to stay in a, when in you said you're spending money tonight, yeah. I said, no, I think I'm saving you another money because I saw that other thing wrong. <laughs> Ron, I'll tell you what, I ran in the back off and grabbed what, whatever literature I had to make sure I was right on. <laughs> Pete, bids are all over the place. Ah, I mean, yeah. they're all over. Yeah. I couldn't see anything that go with anything in there. Yeah. I it's not see. like the people are there. Huh? Evans. Truck it. Yeah. 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 I just couldn't see any. I mean, we looked at that, looked at that, and okay, let's see, they added a couple of bells, but we were all sudden done. Yeah. I, and I, I, I just couldn't see that. Got yeah. it. So. I assumed what they were saying is that they weren't interested in the job. Well, it seems like you only get two beds, I would say that too. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's like it's the, you know, it's the most. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. I would like to see that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We're all done. We got the 19 feet of rock. All right. We should be done tomorrow. We'll send one of them to Marshall. All right. This is all that road. Okay, the three year stormwater permit. All right, uh, uh, Chassie, are you headed out? Uh, no, I'm still here because they haven't started yet, so I can stay longer. Okay, no, I just didn't know if you were watching the clock, so I know you said six thirty, but that's good. Yeah, no, I'm walking. I'm walking. I'm walking through Lamoille to find food right now. <laughs> They're running late, so I'm good. So. Okay, so three acres stormwater permit. We got an email from Grenier Engineering who's working with uh, Paul Nesky. Okay. Paul Nesky at Sterling View. Uh, they received, Grenier Engineering received an email from the state of Vermont with the opinion that the town of Hyde Park needed to be co applicants on the three acre stormwater permit. And if anybody's been paying attention to stormwater permits, they went and scooped up all pre existing three acre sites, which weren't previously subject to the new rules for state stormwater and put them in the kitty to upgrade. Mm -hmm. So the high school 
Sterling View, and one other site um, in Hyde Park got scooped up. Right. So in the past, the town objected to joining stormwater permits where the state was making an interpretation of their rules. And we've gotten away with it in the sense that the rules weren't written to be very strict. They, they did allow a little bit of an argument. So we didn't take on the permit responsibilities and costs for all taxpayers on private projects. And this one, they're operating under new state stormwater rules, which is a three acre stormwater rules, which apparently the state has taken a position that if there's a public highway through the three acre parcel, development project. So they look at the whole project, even if it's multiple lots and things like that. So, so think of uh, how the grocery store from Parsons and Menashe was just talking about, or even our facility here with multiple parcels with town garage and town office. Um, <clears throat> so town roads are now grouped into that. And that's why the state of Vermont is saying we should. But my preference is to argue a little bit and say, no, we don't need to because of something. And that would relieve us of the Sterling View permit requirements outside the right of way. So I think that's the critical thing. We, I think we are still subject to stormwater rules under MRGP, which we do all, all day long. Three acre rule requires Potent, I mean, this is potential for that site, two or three more stormwater ponds to be built, for example. That's a big deal. So do you want to sign on to their stormwater permit without checking? And I, my recommendation you don't, that you at least make sure that you're forced to do it by the state of Vermont somehow. And then if we get a, no, there's no way out, then you try to limit your responsibility exactly. somehow. Exactly, to limit what we're So if we have to do it, I would, I would I don't know if it's a legal argument or if it's a permit regulatory, I don't know where to argue that, but I don't think we should just say, sure, we'll be an equal co-applicant and sign on to everything you guys got to do. I don't, and I don't want somebody else to figure that out either once we're already signed on. So my recommendation is to just check in with the town attorney because I don't, the state of Vermont's already made their decision. The park would love us to be co-applicants for, you know, cost sharing because we're public coffers here. We need a motion on that. Um, not at this time. I think the uh, the idea is that I would just go and confirm that we work with the legal part. Yeah, and yeah. then if we have to, I'll come back and I, for an yeah. action item. Yeah, yeah check with the league of cities and towns too, because I expect other communities must be running into this. Yeah, so I, I can check with them first and say because yeah. they have a legal team and if they right. want to get into it. Sometimes they back away from you know really detailed stuff, but if it's a broad issue, they might have already. Been asked to do it already. Yeah. Who was our town manager there, Mr. Allen? As far as working with him, Paul Nesky. Okay, thought, yeah, yeah, town moderator. He's yeah. also the president of the yeah. board. Okay. Yeah. So I'll do that and come back at another meeting. Um, mm -hmm. They are. I don't think there are any time frames yet. They just barely asked in July if we would co-op. Right. Right. They probably have a long list of all the things they're doing now as the owners of the property. Okay, um, the uh, the labor contract. I think we need to. Uh, they officially accepted it. Now we have to officially accept. It. Yes. So just need a motion to accept it. So move. So move. Yeah. Okay. Right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Anybody abstaining? All right. Uh, okay, we have uh, Jason, as just I think we all know, has uh, has uh, completed his probation. And this memo from Mark. Mark, want to add anything? So far, so good. You all didn't die of the heat last week. I called Mark a couple of times, really being worried about people working in this stuff. Oh, come on. Yeah, we didn't get this hot. We're not used to this. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Jeez. Run, run something without air conditioning. See you. <laughs> That's it. Without you air get the truck loading faster that way without the air conditioning. You get a breeze blowing back. 
<laughs> Increased productivity. <laughs> Great week for COVID changing. Um, so we have Jason. Let's see, we got that. Okie dokie. Um, yes, and, and while we had Nick here, this um, the Diggins Road continuing with our class three, class four project. So the um, low bidder was Menash at 16,700. Did I miss something? Yeah. What'd you miss? So Jason was. It was just letting us know we didn't have to do anything. So he's automatically. Yeah. He's an employee now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's just off the probation. Okay. Just letting us know. So the um, there's three phases of class three and four work under the grants and aid, which is our annual. They call it a grant, but basically it's money that the state is allocated each town every year if you want to take advantage of it. You know, it's not mandated, it's 80-20% split. Uh, Manash was low bid for phase two, which is getting up uh, up around the corner by Maynard's to the fire pond. And that would be a motion to approve uh, the low bid and use the state grant for that um problem with that which we're trying to figure out a little bit today uh is the knotweed so most of the hill kind of some of the flat areas once you get up on the hill is not weed infested it's just just thick M multiple years i don't know it's not uh we haven't really dealt with it at all but now we have to deal with it somehow so there's basically three options to deal with not weed debris, which is contaminated fill. I guess there's a fourth one. Uh, along Route 100, it looked like somebody had maybe ditched the west side and then they filled the east side. So they didn't really leave your project area. They just moved material across the road and used it to fill out an embankment. So they never left the site, technically. That might be a fourth option. <laughs> yeah, but you could be a different owner on the other side. <laughs> so that's one option. Another option, if you're really creative and you see knotweed that we need a blow ditch, is to try to massage the knotweed into the material so it doesn't leak. That gets really hard when you're trying to go from a narrow ditch to a six foot wide thing. So there really isn't, you, you need to get it out of there in order to have a good product at the end. So of those getting it out of there, there's two. Basically, just three options. Any, I think we can spray that out of it. Kill it. No, no. We'll try it. Yeah, there's a part. Got to be sorry down there. Nope. Well, they even cut it down after it got to the pool. They cut it down. And, and spray the that. Best, the best thing they did is the closest they come to it was they cut it down and then they took Roundup and put it inside the stem down into the roots. There is, there is some stuff, because I've been doing that study on it to get rid of my problem, <clears throat> and there is some stuff that has come out, but it has to be applied at the time when the uh, it's blossoming. Yeah. And so... so uh, I think it actually get ready to go on the blossom. Glyphosate. Something like that. And once they hit the leaves, it travels down through into the root system. Yeah, huh? it, but it had to be a certain time when it worked. Yeah. Huh. And you can spray it right next to your roses. Okay. As long as it don't touch roses, it won't hurt. It, it only will kill the plants that hit the leaves. I'll try to get that um, that information and get it to everybody. I'll send you a link to yeah. it on YouTube so you can look at it. it. But they were taking out acres of it, not just uh, the one that used to work over here. <clears throat> water resource. She that's what she does. She does a lot of studying. Oh, Kim, yeah, Kim used to do invasives. Now she's she's, she's doing, working for the state. She's doing water invasives yeah. now. She went from dirt to water. To water, okay. Yeah, she yes. does a lot of studies on that. snails and clams. Oh, okay. uh, for the state. So anyway, that's that's an unknown. There's three the three options that I think we have. Uh, well, they all have pros and cons. The cheapest is to bring it to a town property, put some heavy plastic on, and hope it doesn't go anywhere. 
I'm just saying the cheap option, right? The most expensive option is to truck it up to Coventry, where they're certified to tell us why. <laughs> That's another option. And of course, if you're going to do that option, you would really limit what you load into the truck and try to keep most of it, you know, within the site and only take out what you really need to. But uh, the middle option is something that uh, Ken Harvey and I talked about today, which was that he stumped up on North High Park Road. Good. Yeah. And whether or not that could be okay. Okay to him, I think, means something I'll, I'll have to do, which is work with the Department of Ag to get that location approved. Well, well nothing will grow on that sand anyway. So if you, if you put in sand that it can't grow on and bury it in sand that it can't grow on, it seems so it kill it out. No, if they just take, took and scum, uh, skimmed off the top. No, of it's not like that. It's not, it's, uh, it used to go, you know what Jap Japanese knotweed, where it started and where it thrived is a lot of a lot of rocks. That's if we can live on that, then. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, volcano right. is where it came from. Yeah. And it, huh. There was an experimental plant back in the 1800s where somebody brought it to England to check it out because it's such a unique bamboo looking thing. And then they mistakenly yeah. used yeah. ornamental plants. And huh. Don Avery <laughs> did the same thing you're talking about with plastic because he's got it running rapid down there, comes right down the brook. So, so he took a bunch of it, put it underneath it. Plastic left it there for three years. I mean, they said it was growing underneath the plastic. The only thing we got not weeding snakes. It was growing. Yeah. It yeah. couldn't leave it. You yeah. never killed it. Well, it'd be great if, yeah, but if if Ken, well, that could be a whole new business. If Ken could get into it, that sort of a pit. You put something down, and then bring it all in. And well, maybe you know, if you cut place. it, and you bring it in, and you spray that stuff on it. You know what yeah. best place for that stuff? I'm ready where? The asbestos mines up there. That hole. That hole. Oh, yeah. 960 would be great. Right. 950. 950. Yeah. They were huh. a little bit after you had that. Yeah. There, <laughs> there, there you could put tons of it out there. But it, it's still kind of like it. No, but if you're right, confining it in the spot is right. <laughs> like the bronze that blows or throws on the lap. Really yeah. nice. Did you see that in the paper? Somebody put it in this week. A thousand dollars reward if anybody could get the knotweed off his lawn. What? Did you see it? No. no. Yeah, it was in the news. It says thousand dollars. Thousand dollars reward if anybody can remove. That's without estimating. Or just yeah. that's all it said. <laughs> that's right. How big is his lawn? Right. <laughs> yeah, still, I mean, you get rid of it this year, next year. Bye. Uh, well, except it sounds like if you get if you have this stuff, if you put it on, you get it to particularly it. If, if you cut it and then put that on what you just cut, so, it will go right down. So, what they stuff. what they said, and you, you should, everybody should have it in the email now. I found the site down there and I just forwarded it to you. But uh, it said that it kills the majority of it, and then the next year it comes back, you'll have these small ones come up. Yeah. And then hit it again, do it again, and that'll do it. And you may have to go up to three years, but it will take care of it. Huh. <clears throat> because of the root system. Okay. No. Watch the video. It's great entertainment. Yeah. Popcorn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, so I guess I guess we need a. Uh, we got. I got a, no, it's kind of like it's another one of those. And so far, it sort of seems like the state says, um, we want you to deal with it, but you can't move it. So what do you, you know, it's like, well, what do you want us to do with it? Or they want us to bag it up and, or, you know, you know start trucking to Coventry or put it in plastic bags and take it to the landfill. Well, that's not the thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then run over it with uh, so some um, uh, bulldozers. Yeah. Uh, motion on the... Uh, Right. a little bit of 16,270 right. so for phase, right. so phase a, two. Yeah. Need a motion for phase two to accept the Minash bid. So sorry. Okay. Any more need for conversation? Everything good? Uh, okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Right. Okay.
All right. Oh, a monthly favorite. Excavator purchase. Okay. <laughs> and Martin, you started you started playing with some of them. I shouldn't say playing. You started working with some of them. See, I'd be like them. Yeah. So so where we're at with it is that um, the uh, one that we got on loan from uh, Pete's, we had uh, a fair amount of issues with it. Um, the track at first was very tight on it, and then they tried to loosen it or adjust it. And uh, um, my experience was it still chattered uh, when you ran the controls. <clears throat> and I, they have two controls. I put my hand on one when I'm controlling it. So I can I can keep the pressure uh, straight on it when I'm going up, and I tried to start off as low as I can just to get it creeping, and the thing would start jumping and it uh, almost throw you right out of the cab. Okay. And uh, and then um, um, what else is the problem? Oh, the controls on the thing. Yeah, uh, when you uh, reach out with a bucket and you try to take it, which is a very big thing, especially if we're going to be doing ditching. <clears throat> and you try to level off something with it. Yeah. It has, uh, Mark told me, he probably explained it a little bit better, but uh, they have two pumps in there. And so when you're coming down and doing it, you got one pump working. It's not enough pressure to, to, to turn it and push the dirt the way it needs to. You need to have something to activate the second pump to give it the strength it needs to do it. So either moving the bucket or uh, bringing the bucket in or something like this to get it to work. And that doesn't really cut it for what we need. Am I wrong? Yeah, just two functions at the same time. Right? Yeah. That is better. Pretty much. And you say turn that other pump on. Yeah. You, the flow of the you can't lift the machine off the ground with the bucket unless you open you know, everything. You were just more, they did work on it quite a bit, a lot better than it was at the beginning. But still, it's the. Uh, that, it to, to, on the plus side for Pete, just. They came over immediately and, and addressed, tried to address the issues with it. They, they were right on top. And as far as I was concerned, I mean, um, somebody coming right in like that is a great plus for any sale, you know, if they're willing to stop everything coming over and deal with your machine right then and there. Now, granted, in this case, they're trying to sell the machine to us, you know, but still, um, that's what they were assuring us that they would uh, uh, continue that uh, service right along if we, if we purchased it from. Now, um, our next one in line is uh, the Volvo, and uh, I've sent uh, two emails out to, uh, to Scott, the uh, salesperson, and I haven't got a response back yet. I was hoping to spend this morning to uh, um, to get a chance maybe to look at one, but I sent him an email Friday and uh, asked him if there's any chance I can find a machine somewhere similar to what we're going to purchase, and just be able to get on to it and, and try yeah. it out. Now, Mark has tried out. Does, does Nick have one? Yeah. 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 Okay. But I want to go through them. I mean, oh, to, sure. no, to, no, right. to give it a fair, a fair thing. But uh, um, so that's where we're at in a sense. Is just just trying to mark right out the Volvo. You like the Volvo, correct? I like the Volvo. Yeah. But I haven't had a chance to get on it myself. But uh, however, the board wants to. Proceed if they want to wait until I uh, have a chance to get on one and try it out, or do you want to go and mark well, could, If Nix is the same, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Would, would it be faster to just go try because Nix there? I, I, I believe you. I believe you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead yeah. of instead of waiting for, you know, um, for that, I'm saying, hey, yeah. Nick, Nick, he's the the uh, the bids you got. You forgot there's a little fine print in there. <laughs> <laughs> So like board gets to I'm wondering how you like would, yeah. <laughs> Okay. So uh, Yeah, and then and then you know and if you like it, it seems so we're just gonna try those two, right? Or are we gonna try a third one? I don't No, I mean we're gonna try to stay between the two because right. they were the lowest in, in right. price. Right. Uh, that's my understanding, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But, uh, um that's a one forty five. Okay. And then what we have is small print, <laughs> at least when I printed it out on mine, is uh, 
of the options for where we come up with the money to purchase it. And um, you all have that. We got Riley sent us a by way point you're off on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well then that's the fourth option. <laughs> We're gonna have you do it with with uh, Brad to help start the fund for the new fire truck. <laughs> So it's just basically you're looking at the uh, uh, a bank loan with an interest plus or minus two percent um, reserve funding, which is not well. We get into the audit, the transfer, all kinds of kinds of money. Um, and of course, we could always not purchase a piece of equipment. Now I'm like, oh, we are buying this excavator. I feel like everything we've gone through at this point is like, we're buying an excavator. Now, saying that, won't they be less wear and tear on the backhoe than the excavator? I would certainly think so. Yeah, yeah. the backhoe still going to go for a bit. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's what I'd be looking at and pushing that out a couple of years. I think that's the sort of long term, but do we and and gets to actually we're going to have a conversation about you know about about borrowing. So how do we do we want to wipe out the reserve fund? Do we want to pay for some of it? Do we you know we can do a and again right now money is still um, for the for the highway. We're just basically we're borrowing for a year, right? Yeah. We're borrowing for a year because it's almost more cash flow management by being able to borrow to be able to pay for it all at once. We're being able to do it, A, do it all at once and get it done, but it's also we got a better price by being able to do it that way. So yeah. so we we borrowed that for a year, but that's gonna be paid off in a year. So we're not we're not looking at but um how much money we got in the reserve. That's what she said. She said she wanted to she's recommending that you Take the one year and then let the audit complete so you have a better, she has a more certainty in the capital reserve balance. Yeah. Just kind of, that's sort of what I most said anyway. So she, right. she wasn't ready to answer that question. Um, Did you mean, she's not ready to answer how much money we got in the reserve fund? Well, it's under audit. It's under an audit. Well, you don't you, you know about it, but it's you know. Well, I'd say part of the argument by buying this piece of equipment is they said in case of fire they can use it to help knock me on the thing. So twenty five percent it took them to the fire department. I like that idea. Okay, freaking brilliant. Only twenty five. You're going to increase my budget. Right, right. Um. <laughs> how many fire? How many buildings you have to? I mean, one area. I'm sorry. You know, with 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 the audit, um, it, it's an interesting and further down here. This, this thinking of also of, of, of talking about finances of the town because. Um, Hyde Park, and again, it's well, we saw when FEMA hit, you know, and, and we are in a solid enough position that we were able to pay all the bills and we didn't have to go borrow money to pay our bills. And someday that money's going to come back in and go back into our accounts. Um, and, and we've been in a pretty good shape. Um, we don't, we don't have much debt, which is a great place to be but sometimes debt again like borrowing to do the road so we got it we can get it all done this year and we save money by doing it as one project instead of breaking it up makes a lot of sense i i think it may make sense to and, and depending if we can borrow but being able to pay it off early once we get things sorted out when we have a variety of money that eventually is going to come in, then we can sit down and say, here are all the different buckets that we have. And if it's great, go ahead and pay off the pay off the loan early. 
or you keep that loan and you build it up so that whether it's another piece of equipment or it's the fire truck that is coming, you know, it, it's all taxpayer dollars. It's just sort of you move it around in the buckets. Um, do you, you know, take advantage of a 2% loan um, for a while and, and see what happens? I mean, you know, we got, we, get, we got a couple of choices there. You know, I, I hate the idea of sort of completely wiping out the reserve funds. Then if something happens, you're not, you know, where you're sitting on these reserve funds that, you know, people are happy to lend you money because you got plenty of, you got plenty of savings. Because you don't need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's right. That is being, uh, okay. You know, where you end up in something, and, and again, who knows what can happen if anything else was learned, who knows what can happen in the world, you know, and, and suddenly we have a gigantic expense, and instead of having a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank, we got $10,000 in the bank, you know, then the bank's going to say, sure, here you go, and, and then we're going to have to, undoubtedly, I think in those situations, you end up needing to hit taxpayers harder sooner, where, you know, this is, this wouldn't be a big deal. And as the, again, there's the FEMA money coming in. We've got this federal money coming in. Um, you know, we can sit down and say, oh, okay, and, and the federal money coming in, you have several years to spend. You don't have to go, oh, we got to get rid of it right now. Um, so I, I, uh, that's like the second time I went in to buy it, to, to buy a new car. And it's, I come from the old school of my instincts are to have the cash, pay the cash for it. Yeah, you know, the financial person is, oh, no, do that. <laughs> Money's so cheap right now. Don't do that. You're earning more money leaving it where it is than you are, you know, financing something at 2%. So I, I go cringe and do a loan on the car. So I, I get, um, <laughs> I get torn in those directions because of my, old school thinking, but it's also, okay. I also, I also like personally, but I like for the for the town to have some money in the bank because you just don't know what's gonna happen. Right. You know, it's, I mean, Hyde Park has been, while our grand list doesn't grow rapidly, we also have been, um, very fortunate, and I, I give Kim a lot of credit for this because she is great at working with folks um, at getting them when they're buying something to have their property tax be a part of their monthly payment. So that while a lot of communities took some real hits on their on and saw their delinquent taxes go up significantly during this past couple of years, when people when we know people are feeling it, um, Hyde Park's been very lucky. Um, you know, we we haven't. Um, folks are being, and, and I mean, I think we all, for a, there's a long history in Hyde Park of working really hard and trying to keep your budget increases at, at two or three percent. Um, and it, you know, and not having a lot of debt. So, what do we think? And, and again, these are the options. We don't, we don't have to make a decision tonight, but I think it's something for everybody to think about. <laughs> I agree with this. We should have drained the account and leave the town with nothing in the coffers. That'd be, that'd be gambling tool. Yeah, yeah, that, that it's just not, and, and again, because I see some some money that's coming in, once that comes in and we know what we have, and, and what's eligible for that, they can put us in a, you know, I'd, I'd love to be able to find, and I don't know if it'll happen or not, but that we could use a chunk of the federal money that's coming in to be able to help pay for the excavator, because, you know, we have another bad flood, you have the variety of things that happen, that, it's going to be really handy to have a good piece of equipment like that, you know, that we don't have right now. And when we had the flooding, it was because Mark was on the phone at 2.30 in the morning calling everybody he knew and getting them lined up before anybody beat them to. Um, 
you know, what if he sleeps late in the next disaster? So, so and again, I say we don't we don't have to make a rolling. What are you what are your thoughts about it? I agree with Dave. I don't think we should do anything else. You'll be a wild spender. <laughs> <laughs> It's, you can ask any of that. High Park has a long history, and I think I think really the and it's one of those things I'm sure most of the people in Durham don't have any idea about. But right, well, we should be proud of ourselves, you know. Okay, I, I think we'll probably once we get a price, we decide to go ahead and do it. We'll go ahead and. We yeah, have nothing to do with this. Thing. Yeah, right, uh, right, exactly. When you it's say no, I don't think it's yourself yeah. to go out and yeah. call up your wife. Right. Well, that's that's not, that that's some other meeting. Uh, the, ideally, we do this uh, for the next meeting. If you can, I'll pro yeah. Yeah. I mean, not you, but <laughs> you, the board, because it, right. you know, just I'm doing my part. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's like to yeah. put it, but not see it on the agenda in September. Right. Yeah. Okay. Would be good. Uh, the other side issue was the trailer for twenty five right. or twenty thousand. I think you right. found something. No, there. I found the trailer. Yes, I found a, a couple of them. But um, um, in the search, <clears throat> I wouldn't suggest them. But uh, for people to look at, there's um, the state auctions are going on right now. For uh, they got two twenty ton uh, trailers on there right now. I saw those. I wasn't as impressed as I was with the one I sent out to everybody. The picture yeah. and the. And I think what was the price on that one? Make it point here. With this one, with this one trailer now, you get this municipal account, right? So you're going to buy new, you're saying? Uh -huh. You're saying buying new? Yeah. You're buying new municipal account, you're almost crazy not to go Right. Well, you say you have a new trailer. For what? Yeah. Yeah. I understand that it is. So this one was ten thousand uh ten thousand six for this one trailer that I, I, I had on here. Did you see it, Mark? Nothing. Yeah. And I know someone had my draw. And I think that is something we can take out of break. Oh, yeah. That's right. Break some paper. But you can see it, but you can see it. I think break this cow, I think everyone's crazy one use. Yeah. Because they're all saying, you know, you know the directions are good, you know the good options. What's the, uh, do you know, you have any idea what the cost is on a, um, with a municipal discount on it? I think it's almost, usually you get a pretty good company. Who would you talk to, like, Keith yeah. or somebody here? Um, I did check with, um, over well, here. We sold out to, we now have a Lansford. Lansford, 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 Oh, set it right up the corner here. Yeah. Right the corner. You, see the, you can look from the interstate look right down. I heard. Oh, here's up down Lucky. Here, here no. should be Lucky. Oh, that's right. Not Heinberg, but okay. the interstate almost was going. Yeah, yeah. Right there. yeah. But there, there's a real good place down there. Uh, they just say Richmond. Heinberg. They sell trailers. They sell trailers for hundred years. But can they get them? Oh, yeah. What's his name? Can't get them, right? Pete. No, uh, Jason. Pete can't, and then Green Mountain doesn't have them. He can't get them. They don't well, go that big. This way. Oh, Green Mountain. They, they, can, they don't go that big. <laughs> they might not have them. Yeah. They do that. Yeah. Okay. You know where I was talking about down in Georgia? St. George. Go right down St. George. Yeah. yeah. Go right down by the golf course. Keep yeah. right on the one right down through there. You see some of that sheriff corner right down there. Oh. No, we're, we're well, help me out. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I've been down there 150 times. You ought to know where it is. I know. <laughs> I agree. Well, but at least you remember where it is. Yeah, I know where it is. There we go. Okay. <laughs> if you stop thinking about it, you'll remember it. That's okay. what you're fine. But, okay. but that's. Be at two o'clock this morning. He's going to sit up in bed and go. Yeah. Right. There you go. We got it. Okay. Um, I 
I'm, I'm going. So do we do we want to go ahead and check? Mark, you want to start checking about buying a new one? Yeah, we can look through there. Look through this. Yeah, yeah I'm curious to see what a discount is. What the municipal discount is on it? Yeah, yeah, and what one costs, and do they have them, and all that, and all that sort of stuff. Just to, okay. Brook Road guardrails. Don't you say it, Brad? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's one written like that. With that Richmond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all on our phones. <laughs> I'm, going I'm just on. waiting for the focus to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, Brook Road guard. Brook Road guardrails. So the town received a complaint, a safety issue at the washout spot, uh, Brook Road, which is just north of. 801 Brook Road, sort of in the middle of the woods. Uh, yeah. It was a washout site from the FEMA event back in November 2019. I don't think the road has changed much since the repair was done, you know. So I, it was just a new observation from somebody that uh, was pretty adamant that some attention needed to be made. Is, uh, so rather than do anything immediately, we mm -hmm. checked with VTrans and VTrans ran sort of engineering preliminary for us for no charge through Jim Code up in St. Albans. And he said, based on the speed of the road, the width of the road, and the fact that you have five to six foot drop-offs on each side, which goes straight down to brook or trees, there's no nine foot clear zone, basically, off the end of the shoulder, that something had to be done there and follow the NUTCD guidelines or whatever that might be, signage, guardrails, reflectors, whatever. So that started the ball rolling in the sense that now we know we have a safety issue that uh, needs to be addressed. And Summit Engineering was called. I called Summit Engineering to say, I don't know exactly know what this big stack of safety stuff is that VTRAN sent me, but it looks like we need to do something with a barrier or barricade along those edges. Summit Engineering looked at it and came up with a guardrail plan uh, versus concrete barriers or reflectors or any of the other things you might do to mark that edge. So that plan was sent to you, which is slightly reduced from his first plan. It's uh, basically guardrail on both sides as you approach the culvert crossing. Uh, 300 feet, I think, is the number, plus or minus. By the time you add in his time and the signs and the guardrail install, plus some extra for who knows what, uh, Summit's budget was 20000 hopefully less. And that would be all contracted out by um, by the town. The Lafayette or somebody would come in with guardrail and signage and be done with it. Yeah, Mark, that's my dear, too, right? Will you fix it up? Is that my goddess? <clears throat> Down below goddess. We're coming back down through where we're, uh, we're coming to the woods. They have a little hole off right there. Yeah. Where you go up to Gardens Field? Uh, yeah, right where you go up to Gardens Field. Yeah. Right there. Between there and the Christmas trees. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen anything through there. We gotta slow down to see anything. Well, that's my <laughs> problem. Excuse me, brother. We're too fast. That thing would be the next one to call me. An old boiler. So tomorrow, this is, this all leads into this you know long term planning for getting anything done around here. Uh, FEMA's calling tomorrow uh, for Allie and I to go over some uh, flood event questions that they still have. One of the questions they have is this particular site. They are deciding whether to put this into their mitigation program, which at least will get hopefully seventy five percent funding. From the, from the feds, but then you have to check all their boxes. Right. So the earliest that we could do what Mark wants to do is probably a five year project. Five now, if they have an accelerated way, I haven't seen it, but if there is, we would definitely want to do that. Maybe, maybe I'm asking the same question that you just said wrong, but can we go back to FEMA and, and make an amendment that this was done during the flood and, we, and it was overlooked? Or... Well, it's nothing overlooked. It was. We're going to put together to get the road open, but it has the drops all the way down to the, the brook. So, so if we did it right at the time, 
No, so you put in the guardrails. Right? If you if you completed the job at the time, FEMA would took care of it. But no, because there was no guardrails there before. There was no guardrails there before. They will not. Uh, they will not. They will not. Let the bank on them then. Oh, that's probably always been a steep drop off, right? Yeah, it's it's always it's always been a steep drop. Yeah. yeah. What I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah. Um so some of that twenty thousand would come back potentially because we can make sure that the new culvert uses the same material. What I'm trying to picture, how far is the road? Um you're standing on the road <laughs> It's right there. Yeah, it is. It's <laughs> over there. Yeah. Well, what our hopes are is actually that will get real on, and the tube would actually be longer, and you can have a slope down. Yeah. Because right now, it comes straight across, right in the ledge, it runs right along the road. Yeah. That's all. And the flow of the brook is off. You have to bring it over a little bit to get right. it up. Yeah, the alignment. Yeah. So, okay. right. good luck with that one. Moving so anyway, so that's the five year thing that Roland's talking about. Is if you want to do it the best way, sometimes you have a lot of boxes to check, and it takes time to get something through that process. But if they are in the 75 to 92 percent reimbursement, sometimes you want to spend the time because otherwise, it'd be 100 percent time, right. right? So that's kind of the pro account of all these projects that we're doing. That's one of three that we're talking to FEMA on the conference call tomorrow about how to move these things forward. So, anyway, I once you have a safety issue on your desk, you can't you got to come up with a plan? You got to work towards a resolution of it, and you have a recommendation to spend the money as an interim safety measure, I guess you could call it, with hopefully reclaiming some of that back with the permit project. So, so there's some. It doesn't really matter what FEMA says tomorrow. If hopefully, well, I'm gonna, I'll ask you the question like what Dave's asking a little right. bit is like, hey, this is part of the same construction project, so we have to, yeah, we have to make time for your mitigation project. Isn't everything we do eligible? So I'll ask, I'll ask him that question. Yeah. 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 I was just wondering about something temporary to put along there. Yeah, I think yeah. Dave, uh, thought about that. Yeah, it doesn't need warrants for safety, as he said. Narrow the road up and things like that. Yeah. So I don't. The, the other thing we've got to keep the width where it is because it can't go wider. But, but there's the already road. an issue. There's already a uh, issue. This would be the process of fixing it. Yeah. And so the the, the safety issue is already brought brought up. So if we narrowed it down and put proper signage in there, it would buy us some time uh, to do it that way. It's, 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 in, it's in the process of what it is, not an actual. Uh, oh, no, no, they totally dealt with it as an interim. They did fix. Yeah. That meant all the safety engineering stuff. That's where you get hung up with the safety maintenance of it. Right, because they aren't seeing the Jersey barriers to meet the safety. Yeah, for the, for that speed road, for that narrow width. Because right now we're going to be barely at 20 feet, which is a plow in a car if you're lucky. So it's not it's not gonna be a super wide thing. It's gonna be a, on the near we have to have post both sides narrow road as you get to the guardrail based on the current design. Because <clears throat> it doesn't have shoulder primarily. It'll be guardrail shoulder, not shoulder shoulder. Two two you know, two ten foot lanes is about as narrow as you want for passing vehicles on that speed road. How far of a section is it? Uh, I know the summit thing. Yeah, summit's in the area. Showed... No, it's in the hundred plus. Bring it down to one lane road and put in those uh, portable. That was the other. Lights. That was the other option is to, was to close the road, which would. Uh, How long do you think it'd be there for the shot? Yeah, yeah, two days. If you close the road, you can come by popular. You can take a vote on the road if they want to save twenty thousand dollars to close the road, and they have to drive to Centerville and Cleveland Corners to get out of there. 
Posen Rhodes is not all that popular. Yeah, you know. For twenty thousand dollars, for three hundred thousand dollars, and a big problem like they do in Eden, they closed a couple roads because they had such a big problem that you right. don't have an option. But here you sort of have a twenty thousand, fifteen thousand dollar option. And it is long. It is long term. It's not like an interim safety. It's interim long term stable solution. So you're never going to have to get there again. It's going right. to be done for a five year window. So I don't really think we have a lot of choice. I think we need to just well, go ahead and I, well, that's it. I was hoping that some, you know, somewhere there would be some miracle solution that's cheaper. But yeah, but the, it has, the, closing the road isn't. No, 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 we can't, we can't do that. So I guess what we need is a motion to go ahead and, and, work. and go with that plan. And then Ron will go ahead and see if he can get FEMA to, you know, if we get a long term solution and, and if that's that culvert becomes eligible for one, but that would be a help. Can you move that brook away from the road? It's all ledge. It's all ledge through there. Well, they, they blast it every day. Yeah, well, I'll figure out what they move the channel. <laughs> Chris, okay. Chris Pinnell, you get a hold of him. He might. I think he's got to say, it's all you ledge. You straight in there. Yeah. yeah. So I guess. Yeah. Yes, we need a motion to go the out of the from south. The, the north side of the road, no, north one. That would be pretty good to it is. It's going to just get pushed this way straight down the chain. You're saying, you're saying the cheapest way is to replace the culvert? From the long culvert in? Well, if you can get it done in a reasonable period of time, then I think you're going to do that. You know, Chris went out and put it out. It's a boiler tube. Oh, it is a. Uh, I know where you are. Going. I don't know what the dimension of that boiler tube was. Do you need another one? More boiler tubes. Where do you call it? I don't know if the rest will call it. Uh -huh. I don't know if the rest will be all done. Oh, yeah, the box called it. I can You're tell right. you what it is. It's You're right there. there. It's, no, it's right now it's existing 48 inch, and then they're recommending 192 by 85 bucks. Oh. <laughs> that all translates to over 175,000. Oh, yeah. So days can go through there. And it's not the only one of those we have. We have probably four at least, plus two major bridges that are coming up in the next 10, 15 years. So your capital expenses are. Facing you down pretty hard. Yeah. That's why I see if we can get it picked up for, you know, in the FEMA program. Mm -hmm. That's why I tried to try FEMA. Yeah. Yeah. But I think based on that, I mean, and let's hope it does get picked up, but it would be five or six years before it gets done. So we really need to invest this money now. I mean, that's well, it's not getting worse. I don't think it's changed since. We all run off to the foot of it. That's right. So, so, so why, why jump through all the hoops we got to do? With because the safety complaint is right. Well, we're working on it. Well, we got to show an action of some sort. Yeah. Take some gravel up there and dump it over the side, spread it out. Yeah, the narrow spot is above the foot. That's, that's where you barely have to point it. Two feet right now. So you put the guard around, you're barely at 20. That's the that was the minimum. Pressure. Okay, so so across the road, how, how many feet is it from the edge of that road until travel parts from the other side of the road? Uh, not very bad. We looked at it, but not 20, 22 is the narrowest part. Of that. 22. Well, your dog is on the inlet of the culvert. No, no, on the road, travel parts of the road on the south side to the travel end of the travel portion on the north side. There's no, there's almost about a foot shoulder on that 20 foot road. So you have about a foot on both sides and then you have your travel lanes. Of so you get 18, 18, 20, well, 22 is the full road. Then your travel lanes are down at 20. If you're lucky. Yeah. So two 10 foot lanes. Well, we, we got a lot of, we got a lot of roads in my track that are 20 foot wide. Well, your, your standard for prior model roads was only 16 feet. Uh, how far is it? Is it road? Eight, 10, 12 feet. I'm you can push an eight, 
eight. Yeah, eight or nine feet anyway. Nine, seven, seven. Yeah, the clear zone is terrible. And as soon as the car goes off, yeah. it's into rock, ledge, or trees. There's no safety. Well, the guardrail really is about the safety of the clear zone, not so much a car tipping over going down. It's right. a, there's problems at the bottom of that. But Jesus, you got anything that hold guardrails there? Longer post. Ledge. You can't put a jersey, you know, jersey barrier there. Well, there's not enough room. There's a barrier there. You bring the whole thing narrow. But they looked at that. They, they, they've already looked at for the design speed of that road, which is 35. Being a main class through through road, cars aren't mm -hmm. they're not going 24. <laughs> and the minimum you make it one lane. Uh we didn't we didn't go down to one lane, it's just a, tra it's a traffic control question on that. I don't I don't we didn't look at it to begin with, so I don't know how you control that. We did look at closing and there's anecdotal support from the immediate neighborhood to do that because they have experienced a lot of bypass traffic from center roads. So they're like, when is this traffic and it's not, they're not used to it. Being a bypass route, so the only other other than other than cooling <laughs> it is doing this interim, relatively low cost, five year safety fix. <laughs> you can't bore, you can't bore into road. I got to go look at it. You can't bore into that road and bring it up. No. Boy, what are you? What are you going to do? Water? Water? How are you going to bring it up? If you go down, it's going to right? Yeah. Drive your fire alarms in. Have the next somebody come up with their heart a little more. Drive your fire alarms in and help your guardrails to that. Yeah, yeah you can if you have it in the ledge. I don't know how much ledge there is. That, 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 that horizontal more will go through that slip and clutter through a pin <laughs> well, But that's still your. Or you're adding a lot more steps there. Because you still want to go with guardrails? What you're saying? Well, you're you're up, up. Then let's put the guardrail up and get done. Because the, the way I'm understanding the issue is not the condition of the road or the condition of the culvert. It is somebody don't it's think it's a drop off. It, it's safe as a drop off. And that would just prevent the drop off. And widen the road as you do it. You put one half and widen the road. You just go down over the side. You're just talking about how you put the guardrail in. You're yes. using the guardrail. Right. Or it's all more. Bring it right. your means out. Set the guardrails up onto it. Well, I think that's if we if we go ahead and do that, then whoever does this project will come in and figure well, out what the best way. Yeah. I've never heard. Uh, I, I'm saying it can't be done. I can't. I can't. Right. But but that says, are we agreeing? We got to bite the bullet, as it were, and we need to go ahead and start figuring out how to do the guardrails the most cost effective way possible. I think that's sort of what we're looking at. There's a lot of traffic, morning commuters that come down that route as a morning. We know that. So, close. You're probably going to hear them. Oh, we're not going to close. We're not closing it. That's, that's not an option. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if we're going to spend my intelligent time, then we considered looking at that. Look. Yeah. So, so when, if, you do, if you do want to delay for, to go look at it, we'd have to, we lost seven cones already. We have to keep, like Brian said, we have to keep doing something to protect that area while you're making up your, your mind. So we put up the cones and those are gone. And, about a week or so. I have Mark. I have black yet. Come on. Oh. And I know the right up here, right? Okay, but what we need is a motion to go ahead and start doing this. Right. Yeah, I think we either go forward or you close temporarily and go out and revisit and try to come up with a more cost effective way. I think you're, those, I think those, to me, those are your two choices. They're both action items that are moving forward. Is motion to go forward with it? To look for Guardrails. Yeah, yeah, the most cost effective way to do the guardrails. Let me tell you, you think topics on there now, you let your start your point in the center of it. You want to push it, you want to push it to the rough road. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going all over the place. I, really. I, it's crazy. I think if Mark can talk to Latvia and have them put that yeah. guardrail in as soon as possible, because we're going to be faced with a huge yeah, increase in traffic yeah. for a long three or four or five 
weeks at least. Yeah. And that puts new people on that road that aren't used to it. And that's what, where the complaint came from. It wasn't the people that drive it every day that just get blurred out. They don't notice right. the edges. Don't notice it anymore. So yeah. Okay. yeah, sort of <clears throat> a new experience for somebody that raised the concern. It was a valid concern when you put yeah. it into the engineering world. Right. You know, 90% of the people don't even see it sometimes. Right. They did the guardrails up here by the covered bridge of Sterling. Yeah. Telling you what, they drove supposed to. Okay, so I need a motion to proceed with the exploring how to most cost effectively do the do the guardrails on the on the brook road. Is, is that explore and do or come yeah, back? It's explore and I think it's well, it's explore and do. We're gonna have to do Well, it. I can tell you if you have life yet before the brook is doing for six eight feet. They're boys. Yeah. I think probably better is get some some different quotes on what it's gonna cost before the five heads. Well you can do yeah, yeah, you can do uh what you call it. Newport there. The fencing is it? They do stuff like that too. Well, yeah, there's another one there. You got me to try? I know there's a suspension trunk in place. Yeah, they do very little to do. Well, to try to get quotes and do it. Yeah. Yeah, we can get as many quotes of people that can do it in the near future. Yeah, not in 2022. Right. right. And then right. go forward with the best quote we got. Absolutely. Okay. okay. All right. That's what we need a motion for then. So move. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Chastity is still showing, but I don't know if she's there. Chastity. Oh. Okay. No, she's pretty, she, she, she's still about chiming in. She's in a meeting. Okay. Um, Prospect Street planting. This just sort of gets us an up to date, right? Yeah, well, it's a couple of things actually. So, this is another one of those. We have a contract already with Jay Hutchins. So, that's most of the work, though. Sorry. Yeah, no. Here. Yeah. We have a contract with Jay Hutchins <coughs> for the paving uh, part of last year's bids with Pitch Hill. And Peter Danforth, and Summit Engineering, uh, both into the stormwater issue, which is how do you fix the problem we had, which was the loop. So when you have a loop, you're creating that green space in between, which collects water and adds to degradation of the pavement, which is what failed that whole area. I mean, yeah, it took probably 30 or 40 years, but could probably wouldn't last longer if it wasn't holding that much water. So the proposal to put a subsurface bioretention called the ADS stormwater system under the road, partially under the road, partially in the middle of the loop would collect all the storm water from the road. So as you get closer yeah. to the loop, the storm water is directed to the middle. Uh, Pete Danforth has a block grant for the state storm water. And I think it's a 50% grant, but I tried to call him today and he didn't confirm that. The Hutchins contract for adding the bioretention, because the first one was first bid was sort of to pave a big teardrop at the end and then neighbors wanted to have the loop back in there so we put the loop back in which creates the stormwater problem which we're trying to solve with this subsurface system the neighbors don't want the sort of stormwater going onto their property from the road they they said yeah in a bad storm we know it usually goes to the left of gary's and goes off and down the hill but the old system was driveways and aprons and front yards and things like that. So the stormwater system does multiple things. It's not just for the road. Hutchins submitted a contract amendment proposal for 59,977, which is very high, but it's a big system too, because you're taking the whole road's stormwater and putting it underground, which makes Peter Danforth's grant more important. So the original grant proposal early on, it was 15,000 or 20,000. And when we gave them this price, 
a little while ago, he said he would amend the grant, but he never told me what the grant amendment was to. How much is the 60,000? Is it 30,000? Right. Which makes the system really sort of affordable because it's a big system at 30,000. But if he's got a 70 or 80% grant, so much the better. I don't know what we do if it's 10% grant or 20% grant. It gets harder to invest in store water that much, but I don't know if the other options are because we've been spending you know six months trying to figure out how to squeeze a stormwater system solution into a road project that luckily Fitch Hill has been delayed, so we're able to focus on it because Hutchins wants to go. They don't they don't want to wait anymore. They want to get going on it. Hutchins wants to get it on their books and won't put their pavement on their books until they don't see you putting on Fitch Hill. You tell me today it might not happen until next year. What's that? Fitch Hill? The no, what? Because they're books. So they don't want to put on their books till they don't see putting on Fitch Hill because it's been pushed so much for Hutchins. You know, from close to that last year, it weren't. We don't want to put on a schedule until Manash is out. Manash, if you drive by, see Manash is gone. I told him, and Nick told me the first week of September, and he said, when I see you put it on, and I'll put it in. But I'm telling you, the schedule is filling up fast. So, so it may not pay me this year, you think? I don't know. I, he wasn't, he was just they were throwing it out there that they, they keep running the problems up there, that they delay it, but they won't be done. Of course, next even, time, even, even if they get done, I think you'd be better off just you know, put a base on it for the winter. But, but it helped a good last winter, right? It did. It was a really good last winter. We had it's all new, new, it's all new ball game. We can't do anything with that until we hear about the grant. On the final retention, how we wait that particular report of select board is well, committee to any last year, but that might be tomorrow. So, so I'm, I'm trying to think of some way to. Because he's not going to schedule anything until Manasha's gone, so we have to go off time. I'd like to get Peter in here to explain why. I can tell Jim Carlin, he told me about it again. He was pretty certain he didn't want to post. Is Manasha his last name? Is that what he was? 18 feet? Was he really? Yeah, he's, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I can tell you that every week, I guess. Yeah. Almost there, almost there. But if it's hammer break tomorrow, no, I think that's what Hutchins is asking. We can't guarantee it's going to be there. No, no, no guarantees in this time. How much more pipe have they got? Maybe you just thought of it, but ATP. So I heard it say. Yeah, he said it'd be done tomorrow. Then he said, oh, I don't know. We are done for lunch tomorrow. I thought maybe. So a lot of balls in the air still. The, 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 Brian and I were just talking about bioretention grant and make sure we know what that is to add on for Hutchins. Hutchins wants to know if we're okay with the 59, the 977, because there's parts and pieces he has to order, which are four to five weeks out anyway. So the longer we wait to tell him, the more even the parts and pieces for the stormwater get pushed into winter or 2022. Right. So it's all, all bad <laughs> to a certain degree, but. Yes, it is. Um, yeah, we're following the water project and we've been, you know, trying to do the neighbors and residents have been really good so far, including rolling. <laughs> including rolling. <laughs> and I said, I look right now, it's looking so good to me. But okay. No one can poke at But it sure would be. But patience is. Going to be waning, you know, if we well, say sure, 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a funny feeling to say that, but I'm not sure what we can do about it. Well, the only thing that we can do, which is kind of be open to moving with the contractors as quickly as we can. So if something frees up and we need an answer from Peter Danforth to answer the four to five week lead time projects, we need to be able to sort of meet quickly or something to or figure out how to. Or figure out how to do it now and 
grants have some kind of motion that authorizes something to move forward if the grant's 50% or more, you know, something like that where you don't have to need them in. Right. So that, that's the way to kind of massage it so we can speed up the outside of meeting thing, have pre authorization to go ahead with a contract amendment with the Hutchins if Peter right. Danforth's right. grant is 50% so. or more. Right. Okay. And what, what's the total cost? 60. 60. <clears throat> Wrong numbers today. I, I know, and I don't dare ask. And what if it's not? Well, then the board has to commit to paying more, basically. Yeah. Like you might want to. Way. And then if you don't, how do you deal with the stormwater and the neighbors' concerns? And right. I mean, pay, paving it and sending it, which was the original idea, is sort of the old school way of doing things. You pave it, you send it, all the neighbors are happy. People don't like stormwater as much. The rules don't like stormwater anymore. They want you to treat it on site. So everything's kind of going against the cheaper way, I guess. So a pre-authorization uh, at what, 60, 70%? <clears throat> yeah, you, pick, you pick a number. So let's say Brian Chackett's authorized to sign the change order for the 60 if Peter Danforth's grant is 50 or 60% more. I use 50 because they're usually 50, 75, or 80. Yeah, yeah. So kind of let's do the 50. Right? I like the 80 for 50, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, mean, right. <clears throat> but so, at least move forward and we know what, and there's, we got, there's money in the stormwater. There's, there, so, there, there's, yeah, there is more money for yeah, stormwater. That's, yeah. where, that's where Peter's block grant comes in handy. He's right. less strains and he can move quickly himself. Right. And, you know, it's already submitted, so we're just waiting to you know, confirm. Right. So, how about a motion to authorize Brian to go ahead and sign off if it, um, if it comes in? So we got a good battery date. Boy, before he's going out. Really? Must be an emergency. to get here. Must be an emergency. Uh oh. Uh oh. There we go. Come on, automatically. If you second that one, I'll stick around. Yeah, he's second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got we got a motion and second to authorize Brian to sign off on the on the project if it's uh, sixty percent more. Sixty percent, okay. So sounds good. We'll do it. All in favor? Yeah, that's right. Keeps us moving. All, oh my no, God, all in favor there. signified by saying aye. <clears throat> oh, right. We have the three, of them, four of us. Okay. The um, yeah, did. <laughs> my phone died, my computer died. I was like, okay. I'll just stop in and see if they're still going. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> we got, we got, everything is my way. We haven't done it. Oh, shout out. <laughs> but we've learned a lot. Okay. Whoa, we learned a lot. Oh, I'm sure. Um, Santa Road Culver. Yay. <laughs> just in time. Yeah. <laughs> nope, we're done. Replace, release. What do we have to do? Anything? Uh, just a motion to accept the work as satisfactory, and then what, uh, what ended up being wrong up there to the center? I mean, where? Yeah, center road culverts, uh, just north of Cleveland Corners, where we had inspected. Right. They, did they reset the amount too? I yeah, so they didn't reset. They didn't reset. So they had to get in there <laughs> and they check the ponding that was on the southbound lane and they check the belt with a joint found out that wasn't cracked or bent or anything it was in all the way yeah it was just a little bit of alignment where there's some debris that was blocking and then there was uh but not much just yeah. an inch or two and the other side when they were excavating they uh, uh found out that the, it was really hard down to the fabric then after that it looks like they just put it in because they could take a shovel and i got a video of it them taking the shovel and just shoveling it out of the way. It wasn't compacted or anything. It wasn't any effort to take that uh, dirt out around there to try to find the uh, the um, joint. So they had compacted sides of the culvert. Or that, that one side they were having issues with. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. So, and they, and the other one that uh, the Percy's people, 
Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And the excavator guy, and I said, that's moving pretty easy. And he it was just falling in, you know, he was taking it out. It wasn't it was just cutting it and then turning it into a stand there. It was falling in. Look at that. I got video of it. But they were, uh, they, they were all saying that they thought the same thing. It wasn't compacted in there. And supposedly it was raining that day. And then that, uh, um, so they probably figured they just put it in there and, and maybe, probably took the bucket and tamped it a little bit and tipped on going or something. I don't know. I wasn't there when they, when they put that in. But uh, anyways, so. It's good now? It, it is compacted. I've watched the whole thing. Uh, we did have um, Dick uh, there and he watched the excavating of one side and then, excuse me, the compacting up to a, a certain portion of it. Then he had to leave about quarter of 11. And uh, and so I didn't want to run off. And uh, if it could happen once, it could happen twice. So I stayed there and watched the rest of it until uh, Dave and Ron showed up. And I, and I went over to Sterling View over there. OK. So. Uh, but I believe it's compacted pretty good. OK. Yeah. So you shouldn't have any other issues. You need a motion on that, or we're good. What we need? Yeah, we need a motion to accept the work and issue the release on warranty, which was part of the deal we yeah. got for them to come back. Right. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Get this one. Thank you. Second. Um, the diesel fuel contract. So every every year we seem, we seem to call around and try to find out who has the best deal of diesel. And we look at the state contract and we find out there's only two trailers that will deliver um, on the suburban and I didn't know about suburban deal. Yeah, so suburban and right. So suburban and uh, SBC have our territory. Very territorial, so you can't get everybody that's delivering down south to deliver up north and vice versa. So um, the contract that we have with SBC is pretty much where we want it, which is six cents above wholesale for diesel, and I think there's a minimum of seventy five hundred gallons for them to come out. Um, the state contract is twenty cents over, for example. And other people are even higher if they're coming from farther away. So six cents above on diesel is about where we want to be. Dave based really with the five cents over, six cents over. So over bunker price. Yeah. So rather than feel like we need to bid every year, my recommendation is that we award a three-year contract for 22, 23, 24 at the six cents for SBC. And then we will revisit every three years and Try to see if there's anybody else bidding for our territory. Um, you're not going to get much lower than that, I don't think. Mm -hmm. So that was, something. you know, we talk about administrative burden of highway. That's just one of those things that just doesn't make sense when there's only one or two and we have a good quote. If they will commit to it yeah, per year, yeah. then we can reduce those annual calls around and wondering if anybody else is new delivery. If anybody does say, hey, I'm serving the area, we'll see you in two years or we'll see you next year. But we don't have to deal with it um, every year. Um, the other thing the contract will do is take it off your um, bulk PO list. So under the current purchasing policy, if the department goes and gets a contract signed by the town and the vendor, then we don't have to do a purchase order, which again, saves tracking of the purchase order. It saves administrative draft, you know, just little things that add up over time. If you can cut them out for the contract, you do it once for three years and it saves yeah. multiple years. Minor, you know, not huge, but it's one of those other things that you take off the list to do. Anybody got any questions or thoughts? Dave? One good? The only way the mid fuel is, is cost up on monthly prices. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then if it's high, it's, it's six cents higher. If it's low, it's six cents higher. Yeah. So, so it's, the motion is a three year with SBC at six cents. So, sir. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. One more road name. 
request. Uh, part of the town 911 ordinance is to require developers to assign a road name when there's three or more houses on the shared driveway. On both of these, they're either existing or adding one more house or should have been named before or something. So they're in the past, I don't know what happened, but they they should have already had a road name. But anyway, we caught it during a current round of permitting for a two lot subdivision of Peary and a three lot subdivision of Marcou. Um, Marcou family is proposing Tilly Drive. They're uh, off Battle Row. And Peary is Latouche and Saunders. So there's three different families there. They're proposing Lorraine Lane. Uh, Lorraine Latouche has been there, I think the longest, maybe. So they would recognize her and everybody's- Not on Tide Back Road? Off Route 100. In North, just south of North Ice Park. Yeah. So- And they have to be lane or drive, right? Lane there's or... no rules. There's actually- Oh, no. Okay. There's, a, there's I actually, that. and I try to tell this to people when they're coming up with road names, if you go to the highway, no, emergency management page of the town website, there's two lists. One is every road in Hyde Park and every road in every other town, because you're supposed to look at adjoining when you pick a name for, oh. so you don't duplicate for emergency responders. And then below that is the suffix list from the United States Postal Service. And that is multiple pages. You can get really creative and people just don't want to do it. I, I mention it all the time and nobody will take no, it. Strange names. Yeah, there's all sorts of fun names that people could put out and usually comes down to lane, road, drive, and the person's name at the time. Yeah. So anyway, if you want to see it, go to the emergency management page of the website. Okay. You'll be amazing. I might just want to just You'll be amazing. <laughs> I say, it is just a little I'm going to be mad that I named my road so right. Yeah. Yeah. It's changing. You could. Right. Yeah, you could. We, we do a road. If everybody's agreeable, we can do a road name change. Oh, see? Now I'm really going to check it out. <laughs> I, mean, I used to know every road in town. Now I don't know hardly any of them because they changed the names to make pretty much. Really? What's been changed? Oh, Grimes Road. Grimes Road. Yeah. Grimes Road. Yeah. Grimes Road. Grimes Road. Oh, right. Road. Yeah. What's, what's Ronjay Road now? Grimes Road. 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 I make a motion to accept that. <laughs> How's that? Okay. All right, guys, second? Second. Okay. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Anybody opposed? <laughs> Anybody abstaining? Okay. Yeah, that means you can. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Thanks for coming. Thank you. Get you here in September. <laughs> warning, warning. Okay. Um, I think we really kind of we sort of began through with the, with the finance discussion, and one of my thoughts was sometime before we get into planning the budget. So maybe between the September meeting and the October meeting. If we do a meeting to just get together to sort of talk about finances and a variety of policies and having some idea at the guesstimates of the amount of money that's coming in, um, you know, with this, you know, we've, we've gotten the list of the, the, uh, I was called the wrong thing. It's the federal money that's coming in that Our we just got, yeah, the ARPA money. Um, and we have a list of things and there's better guidance on it, but at that meeting, be able to look at it and say, okay, here are the first couple of projects. For sure. We all agree that we want to get done and start to get those things moving down the, moving down the road, but it might be again, just good to get together to be able to spend an hour and a half yeah. talking about money and finances and, and some sort of long-term thoughts and planning about. And it makes me excited. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I get to talk. If you were if you were going to do it, I would like to see it done in end of September because October I'm not busy. Yeah, that's that's why I was thinking. And like just looking at it, it's like the yeah, yeah. 
Well, that's what I, and I was thinking, or do, do we maybe want to do it before, because the September meeting is the 20th, you know, it's always, it's always I'm going to be the one the whole month of September. Ooh. Want to have fun? Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, our meeting is the 20th, the regular meeting. Yeah, the regular meeting is the 20th. Dave, when do you get busy in October? Oh, First Saturday. Get back. <laughs> First Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we going to do it? October. Labor Day. We'll take okay. that off. Yeah. 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 Sorry. It's last week of January if we're lucky. Mm -hmm. First Saturday. I might yeah. take this mm -hmm. one. Maybe get on the morning. It's no evening. So, so yeah. I know. So we're either going to miss, we're going to miss the the website. Brian or Dave. What's that? Because we're going to miss Brian or Dave. If we do September, we're going to miss Brian. Well, I, I might be able to find, if I know, I can find some place with Wi-Fi. Um, I think they yeah, got just a guy in Texas, and then just call in. I hope they do. Right. Yeah. They should. I think they have, they're doing all these fancy things down there. That, you know, when all the, they're becoming, everybody yeah, has a Silicon Valley. Texas. Yeah. They're doing some, yeah. they're doing some great areas down there. Yeah, there's there's a lot of monitor, too. <laughs> no, you. We're going to try. <laughs> We're going to double up the strings on the can. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that make it twice as fast. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, that's how it Okay. All right. So, all right. So, if we want to do it sometime in September, we want to do it before the regular meeting. Maybe yeah. that. That week before, and it shouldn't be. This would be, you know, we get together for like an hour and a half or something. Not only Buzzka, but we're on vacation sometime in September. I don't know when. Yeah, I'll mail in last week. Okay, okay. Well, why don't we can just let Rodney will sort of yes. just email around and find a. Find I know the date. We do the eighth, ninth, and tenth. Yeah, six, that's Labor Day week. Six is Labor Day. Yeah, six is Labor Day. Yeah. Is that week? So, so, uh, no, the, the 13th, 14th, 15th. I don't know all that wrong. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's all. I don't like it. Okay. Right. We'll just, just, she just tells just you. Figure out sometime. Yeah. yeah. And you just say, exactly. That's, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. You got yeah. it. There we go. That's what you need. Well trained husbands. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and again, that shouldn't be, it's just an opportunity to put some, some thought and some ideas about it. Okay. Oh, custodian to request ticket book. What? <laughs> what? What? What's number four, Ron? Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, Keith Ulrich is a animal control animal officer. Control person. Right. Yeah, he's our only animal control officer. We've been training and talking and trying to figure out animal control in general. Uh, he's gotten to the point now where he feels he has a good understanding of the job. Most of it is complaints. So. Great, like all of the second half of July, first part of August, I was the acting animal control officer. So I had to take the initial complaint from a dog bite, copy sends us some acts. I have to call the animal keepers, tell them to keep their dog under quarantine, and that Keith would be following up. If they don't follow, if he follows up and finds out they weren't licensed or not rabies, or they didn't follow the the rules for a quarantine. All he can do right now is say you shouldn't be doing that, and you know it's a it's a violation or whatever. But he doesn't have the ticket authority yet, so okay. we've been holding back on that gotcha. while he ramps up right. the it's bigger right. picture. Gotcha. Okay. Because part of part of animal control is really a skill of sometimes negotiation, sometimes just meeting with somebody, sometimes just help holding a hand because it's they're physically have a problem that they haven't dealt with before. So you don't want to hit them with a whole bunch of sides, but mm -hmm. most people will come into compliance. 5%, maybe a little more, just are not, there's, there's a whole group, Dave's making a face, but there's a whole group of people that just don't think there's any enforcement. Mm -hmm. So what Keith's trying to do is close that gap yeah, sure. with the people okay. that would listen, right? Okay. If they yep. were, it was a flyer or a reminder or front porch forum posting, and then you're still getting that five or ten percent that just they're in the country, they don't care. They're not gonna get 
license. They're not going to let their dog on a leash. They're going to let it roam. They're going to let it chase deer or whatever. So that five or ten percent is where Keith needs the the enforcement part, which is really the ticket and fines. It's all set up in the ordinance. It's not a matter of doing any more paperwork. But in order for him to get his ticket book, we already had training with a the deputy. They came over and walked through the ticket, the same as writing a speeding ticket. Um, so, so he can do he can he can write tickets uh, under the ordinance. That, that does not go through the the Mark County sheriffs. It goes through the town. I, I, we don't know, everything goes through the Vermont Judicial Bureau, right? Oh, okay. But we don't have to call a sheriff to issue a ticket because Keith, as an appointed animal control officer, is authorized under the ordinance to write tickets. Okay, now just let me take it a little bit further. Uh, my dog is not vaccinated, <laughs> uh, right? Uh, so I get a ticket and I, I say the hell with you, get another ticket, that, 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 that. All of a sudden, he comes up now. I got a client to go to court. It has to go. Yeah, well, it goes to the Judicial Bureau. So you get a ticket, and a copy goes to you, a copy goes to the Vermont Judicial Bureau. If you don't pay the Vermont Judicial Bureau with a little envelope, yeah. it's going to hand out with a certain amount of days. Then it turns over to the sheriff, not over to the town. Uh, if they, if you don't pay, my understanding is if you don't pay that ticket, there's a notice that goes that you're in default. Right. So mm -hmm. when you go into default, you could get a court date. And then if you go into default, then you get a subpoena from the court to go. And that's served by the sheriff. So the person usually will hopefully in this think about the 75 percent of people that are in the middle will either comply or pay the waiver and get a lesson and they pay half of the fee. So if it's $50, they pay a $25 waiver fee. So so Rogers OK with this. Uh, I don't know if it's Roger's decision. Why would it? They wouldn't, this doesn't put anything on Roger. Well, it doesn't if it went that far and it then goes to the sheriff's department. No, it doesn't get, it would no, only the court order the, goes. the court order. So oh, you, oh, you, you oh, have oh, to the go far court. enough to you're going to. If you miss your court date. Right. So yeah. if you miss the court date. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this the court's going to tell Roger. Yeah. Get Dave in here. Yeah. <laughs> this is between right. the town and the judicial bureau. That'd be Dave right. telling Dave. Dave. That's right. <laughs> so does the town get money from these? Yeah, tickets? those fines are our fines. There are fines just yeah. through the judicial bureau. Yes. But I think there's a ticket servicing charge of sure. 20 bucks. I'm sure. Yeah. Also nice. the get the, yeah, right. the state will take its right. cut. <clears throat> Got it. And I think we have a one year. I think we have a repeat. So we have an escalating fine schedule. If there's a second violation for the same thing within 12 months, you get double that. And then you keep doubling up to five or eight hundred dollars. If you keep violating within stack them up. The, the best deterrent really is is capturing the dog and putting it in the kennel because they won't release without license and rabies exactly. and kenneling fees paid. That's that's a lot quicker than a judicial bureau, but you can't always get your hands on it. We had one case a few years ago where we had a repeat offender. And animal control at that time for Hyde Park wanted to go. They were so upset by the care that was not being given that they wanted to go into the house and grab the dog because they could see the dog at the door. And the owner just stood there and said, nope, you can't have that dog. No rabies, no. But because the animal's inside, we don't have the authority without a court order to go into the building. Yeah. So these are all the little training <laughs> things that even though you're passionate about animal control, yeah. You still are constrained by what you can do. the system a little bit. Yeah, no. So it's kind of ACOs are just by filling in for Keith when he was away. It was a lot of passion, a lot of energy, a lot of you know yeah. care, not care. We have somebody on East Main Street that just lets their dog roam, and nobody wants to walk on East Main Street. So how do you deal with the whole neighborhood issue when you the sheriff to go there and the sheriff? We won't even go to the building anymore because the inside is so bad and suspect. They we're not safe to go in without a sheriff. So there is there's a lot of cases where you just tread lightly and hope that that 90% gives you a good experience, but it's not a high risk right. job, but it's riskier than a highway department. Because right. you're actually interacting with people that are high emotion sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And you never know when you're yeah. going to step on their well, toes on your way. Up. So yeah. anyway, we tried to send the sheriff with the animal control and yep. we feel like it's needed. So on this one, uh, it's a motion to uh, appoint Keith 
Ulrich is custodial official, and that allows right. him to communicate with the Judicial Bureau and get a ticket book, and he'll be responsible for tickets, you know, 101 to 120. He has to report that list to the state and keep track of that. Okay, so we'll so move. Custodial. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Right. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. We're lucky to have folks that are willing to take that job on. Proctor <clears throat> French used to do it. Uh, uh, he told me the best way to get a dog is with Kusan Donuts. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I asked him. I, I had to ask him. I had to ask him what you're going to say. It was a plane, it wasn't sugar. He'd get them every time. Right. That's great. I think I even buy a snack myself. Oh, okay. David. But remember, it's not the dog folks, it's the owner. Yeah. It's the keeper. Right. <laughs> okay, the North North High Park planning advance approved request for this. All right. So this has been percolating for a while. Um, back in 2020, the planning commission decided to focus efforts on revitalization of North High Park. The planning commission got a grant with regional planning to study. Uh, Main Street Initiative for North High Park. They're having an event on September 25th to uh, in, do a pilot pop up project on Route 100 for a crosswalk with VTrans and uh, Planning Commission. And part of that Planning Commission report was in MPD 20 was uh, neighborhood meetings that identified wastewater as a uh, constraint on revitalization and redevelopment of North High Park. $60,000 planning advance is $60,000 from the state of Vermont agency natural resources, which will fund a study from a professional consultant engineer type person to look at two main topics. None of it has to be paid back if the construction doesn't go forward. Only if construction goes forward will they take the 60,000 and roll it into the $2 million bond or whatever. So it's called planning advance because it's trying to figure out if it's a feasible project. Basically, if it's not feasible, then the state writes it off on there. Uh, two parts. One is to focus on Cuyahoga Valley Hall's wastewater system, which we think is a tank in the ground out front somewhere, which limits the, uh, well, it doesn't limit it because we haven't failed it yet, but limits the <laughs> usage. <laughs> You know, common sense, it limits the amount of usage if you don't know. So they haven't, they were not tempted to have big events mm -hmm. using the bathroom. I think even if they had a big event there, eventually uh, they'd probably have four those outside just to protect the system. But the first test is what can that, what are options for that building? Is a new community center building up there? Second part is a decentralized sewer system for North High Park to serve businesses, homes, converting a single to a duplex, all those things where you collect all that stuff at the road, send it to one or two decentralized systems so that people can invest in their property and have wastewater salt. Water supply is solved because it's public water system up there. High Park Fire District number one, which has capacity. So that was the sixty thousand dollars was taken from uh, Wolcott. Similar study where they did one for Wolcott Village or North Branch. I forget. They did a village decentralized study for similar purposes. Okay. So that is a motion to approve all of that which is a $60,000 planning advance, and to have the um, Lomelo County Planning Commission do the management of the project. So they would do the RFP, they would work with the town planning commission and the committee up there to select the consultant. Regional planning would work with the consultant to prepare the report and do the studies and try to less work for me, basically. Is that, is that, a, grant? Is that a grant? Just... No, planning advance is, is a two, two Two outcome out of money, basically. One is they write the state writes it off as a grant without any expectations if there's no construction. It's a loan, basically, they get turned into the construction loan if there's a project. So one way it's paid out over long term, the other the other rent is right, 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 right. Yeah. I don't like to use the grant term because grants and Include some product and some contingencies. This is just a we're going to do the report. If you guys decide to go forward, we'll roll it into the construction loan. If you don't, we're not going to ask for it back. 
it was sort of a great effort without the right. normal. Okay, so we need a so <laughs> to go with it. Oh, okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Ooh, fall must be coming. It's bottle drive time. Obviously, uh, the soccer bottle drive, they want to do it the 11th of September. It's always, that's a great place to have a bottle drive. Oh, yeah, it, is. it is. It's a wonderful place to have it. Yeah, yeah. No, the band one here for something. The Hyde Park 6th graders. Yeah. Usually yeah. we do it here. Yeah, it's it's like it's somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Uh, somewhere we let them use a parking ride for the all the right. Absolutely. Right. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Can I anybody close? Uh, yeah. Quick question. Oh, go ahead. Sure. Please. Okay. Go, finish. Right. Right. We'll finish that one. Well, it's like perfect timing when I saw this because I got into one of those cleaning up and I got gigantic arm bagged up with the bottles. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, I, I just dropped off a couple bags for the, the uh, church over there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Even they haven't either they haven't picked it up for a couple of weeks or everybody's bottom there. That thing is full and way over on the lawn. Must be because it wasn't like that when I drove by not too long ago. So it must be somebody <laughs> emptied out or something. <laughs> I was going to take mine there and I saw all yeah. the bottles. I said, okay, I'll hold this for the piece. That's just something that I've been wanting to do. Could I ask for a second yes. motion? Yeah, second motion, right. Uh, the reason this is on the agenda is because we had a first time request for a bottle drive or fundraiser event two years ago, maybe, and it had never been asked for before. So the current facility use policy that the town follows uh -huh. allows the town clerk to issue approvals for the use of this building. Giant Valley Hall, et cetera. So we have it all set up. We don't, we didn't, we didn't have it set up for the park and ride lot. So it was a special request to use that. So I'd like to have a motion to amend the facility use policy to include the park and ride lot, which allows the town clerk to give approvals. Okay, right. So long as it doesn't yeah. conflict with other town events, so like, yeah. like an yeah. election. Yeah. Second. Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Okay, errors and omissions. Somebody got their name left off. <laughs> it's just a name change. It has no, no, just some statutory requirement for you to sign that paper that's on the desk down there. Oh, okay. Marla. Uh, this one? Yep. Like that one. No, 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 this one. So the, the signature spot is on the right column with the green. I got it. Not the left column, which is for the town assessor. Right, to the listers. Okay. We only need three signatures, but you can also okay. if you find room. Right. Okay. Okay. Do we need a motion even though we're just signing it? Um, you should have a motion. Okay. Motion to uh, to add the second owner's name to twenty two sixty Battle Road Road. So we part of Blue Road. Mm -hmm. So move. Yeah, second. You don't have to. Second. Oh, we don't want to. We're no, to we're here. They only need to get rid of it. Oh, so yeah. if you don't want it, you don't have to. All the favors to the know this one up is starts the stack report. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. We got the town minutes. Oh, we got the town order. So yeah. let me see here. What do we got here? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Should be four packets for orders. A little tiny one. <laughs> that makes the one that's for $150,000, right? Plants, herbs, and lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? 
How often does the fire department get paid? Twice a year. Oh, okay. Oh, so it looks like we all need we all need to sign on the on the sixty thousand dollar grant thing, right, Ron? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, sorry. Use grant. <laughs> I think it is. No. Right. If so many grants are out there. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're coming at you from all directions now. <laughs> This is where's Stephen Martin doing work in the uh, library basement. Oh, okay. Do we have a uh, unit? Do we have an issue? On or around the second week in July. This kind of a wide open question. <laughs> that would have been July four. No. Right? No, middle of July. And the reason the reason I ask is is I'm looking at all, all the, the employees pay and they, they seem to run as normal except for hand. Rock Lions was making thirteen hundred dollars for that week. So was Mark on vacation? He gets paid okay. twice a year by the fire department. Oh, and they include yep. it in one yep. paycheck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. Really? I remember it. Yeah. I, I remember. I remember that. Well, it's it's from from last year. It's not yeah. too different. No. Every, every all of that. Yeah. <laughs> every six months we get the. Yeah. yeah. Every six yeah, months we see a doubling of his pay. Because they don't give him a separate no. check. They do it whatever he wants. We don't ask questions. Say, oh. say that again. Every six months, he get double and double About, because huh? it's his fire pay. His fire pay gets added to that to report, his regular, but not regular. double his pay. I'm just saying, it's whatever he has. It's about <laughs> yeah. you, what you're saying. What you're seeing is the, a big increase because he gets fire and highway pay in the same week. You know, it takes a lot more. I know. I, 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 the other, no, the other, the other adjustment that happened. Which I don't know if you're looking at, but they also got retro pay for the union contract. Yeah, so all the highway guys, three of them got it. No, no retro just, just Brian stood out with that fire pay. I yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's a first time. I was going right. to say there will be another. Time. There's going to be another week in there where you'll see retro pay, which I think was two weeks ago. Yeah. So if you see another one, then three of them yeah. should have gotten up. Yeah, no, this one wants to stood out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do stand out. Right? No. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, that's personal. <laughs> personal choice. Yeah. Okay. I think sometimes you just do financial, you just point them, you got a choice, and then they get to make it. Exactly. You think it's a stupid choice, you're going to go, okay, it's your choice. Your choice. <laughs> That's when you go, yes, dear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. <laughs> What's that? I know. 
Oh, no, it's perhaps it's more taxes, is it? Yeah. Uh, you made that one. Oh, I see. This one's done. Here we go. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And he calls you got the guides. Nobody. Really? Not one. Well. Dan works for Joey Davis. Oh. <laughs> no, so, so, but no, no one's fine. The people you should know? Yeah. Well, I think about one that you know. Lucas. Oh, right. I did see that. They're in the same area. Yeah, everybody, there's only two areas of dog. Oh, right. One they do. Because I did see that Lucas and Craig Edwards. Yeah. All in the same area. Uh, Wait, you did? Yeah, I'm hooked up to him. I told you I got that. Whoops. Okay. Every time I put the little thing over here. Excuse me. Which one did you get that? Four dollars. Terrible. You know, you can set that one, right? Have, have there been, like, since you're saying that, I haven't heard anything all summer long down our house. You can usually hear them, you know, rolling in the fall, they'll start, they'll start singing, but we haven't heard a thing. Oh, they're Robert. I'm up right around here? Okay. Robert Don is doing a good job of thinning them out. Yeah. Since January 1st, I think he told me the other day he shot 63 guys. You can shoot as many as you want, right? Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I watched the mother two pups just about two weeks ago. By your house? And that was pretty amazing what she did with the two pups. Amazing good or amazing? Just they, fun they, to watch. They took a deer right in. Did they really? Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I two do. little dogs, you wouldn't think that they would. Oh, yeah. Nasty. Yeah, they are. They're, yeah, they're yeah. ferocious little creatures. Yeah. I got a okay. picture of one of my game camera that has no hair. Oh. Mange? Yeah, they're big mange. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Dingoes out of Australia. Yeah, they, they, got two, they got two of the turkeys, too. Jesus. Huh? You can keep shooting on them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. We need uh, to approve the town orders. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor of approving town orders signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Anybody reviewed and looked at the minutes? Ooh. I did. We all got one. Yeah. <laughs> we had forever. We couldn't. We just we couldn't, couldn't move along. Yeah. We couldn't move along. Okay. We good with the minutes? I move you accept the minutes. I move second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. The other little odds and ends here. Um, oh, uh, town personnel policy. You and comments. Comments due in two months. Sent it along. Send it along. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't get an update yet. Um, we asked for a conference call yeah. before they start doing work. Yeah, right. But we haven't got that. Yeah. Okay. I'll follow up tomorrow to see if she's Look got an idea for what she's yeah. going to talk to us. Exactly. Okay. Um, wow. Today's Monday, Saturday. Um, we're doing the little the fire department's doing the hamburgers and hot dogs, and library's doing their book sale. And we're going to have uh, bike helmets and blood pressure and just informational stuff about, you know, about about health. And actually, Brad had called me, and his supervisor wanted to know if it was okay to uh, to offer uh, COVID shots, vaccinations. I said, oh, good I, idea! I can't, I can't think of a better place than the health day. But oh, yeah. the door, it would be fine. He said, "Well, because you know, the Royal Health Partners is doing it. We're going to do." It. I said, "No, I think it's great for you guys." 
You have the times for that for the public? Uh, 10 to 2. And LVB is uh, is going to be there, keeping us entertained. So, um, and we and we have the leftover ice cream from the from the social. Social. From the social. Ah. So they had they had lots of uh, they had ice cream left over. So we're gonna we're gonna give away hamburgers, hot dogs, and and um, and ice cream, and that absolutely is healthy. It's on Saturday. Yep, it's on Saturday. Um, if <laughs> If you eat that all the time and that's the only your only diet, it's probably not very healthy. But this is mental health. Very that's important. right. Oh, that's the wrong part. Right. Yes. Very important. Yeah. Very important. Um, one hundred. The North Hyde Park speed limit extension. That request went into the state of Vermont in May of twenty. Yeah. And when and then right now at the beginning of yeah, we're everybody in COVID. Yeah. So we unearthed it earlier this year, part of that MPG program up in North Bay Park for the planning grant. We haven't heard back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, we'll get right on that. So, so they did their site visit and then they scheduled the hearing, which is um, sort of like a rubber stamp because if the, if the safety committee doesn't recommend it, then the board doesn't do it. But if they do recommend a change, that they have to meet officially as a board to right to approve it. So, so that should go through, and um, they know we're still interested uh, in it moving forward. Yeah, I was. It's actually going to happen, really. Like, huh. well, it's maybe by next year. Well, no, I think actually they'll say okay, and that's the uh, it's done. Yeah. yeah. Well, the decision making is done. Then we go B train has a whole other system for putting one sign in that there's <laughs> at sure. least a year before a sign goes up or moves. It's got to go across 14. It is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 27 bits. I was, I was tracking the, the little Green Mountain byway signs. Unbelievably slow. There was just, you have to have patience and just know that it's going to happen. Almost like trust it's going to happen. Yeah. And then whenever you call, oh yeah, it's over and so and so, it'll get to so and so, it'll get to so -so. sign off by 18 division. I have no idea. It was just amazing. So the same thing for any signage. Sure. But anyway, so that's moving forward finally, which is all we can do at this point is get it to this here and have a point there. Uh, yeah. Funny. Okay. Well, step one of 172 steps has been completed, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, our little project up in North Hyde Park and that Ron's graciously been putting some time into. It's, it's regular time, so it's not totally distracting, but it's working positively at this point. So what we had to do was hook Mr. Bartlett up with a social service person at Capstone who's been able to access all the various different programs. And she was very upset that he had fallen through the cracks because a lot of the social services in Lamoille County are meant to help people just like him, but he doesn't have the capacity to reach out. So once we were able to connect him with the right people, the, you know, the balls start to roll a little bit oh, okay. and they all have to go different ways. So if it doesn't go here, it goes there. So um, part of the problem is that he's a squatter. Technically, the town owns the property and he's not a renter. So we had to work around that a little bit. Uh, Capstone seems like they will be able to help um, probably in four different ways. State of Vermont has a utility program for arrearages which has to be signed up by the aid by the utility. Of course, North Hyde Park didn't sign up, even though there are a lot of people in the rear. So if they had done that, the system would have, the process would have gone slower. So she's gonna work with Roger Odette to make sure they're on the registry. Village of Hyde Park is on it already. So they're gonna quickly get that paid. So those two debts are close to $3,000 for mm -hmm. utilities. That's good. The other debts are there are two. One is the dollar amount the select board wanted for the purchase sale agreement, which is about five thousand dollars that um, gives a check cashier's check for last year that needed to be renewed uh, because it expired past the ninety days. So if 
he didn't call, even though we tried to get him to do it last fall. He didn't call this spring. And for some reason, he finally called. And I think what he did was ask questions if he could have the money to live on because he's getting absolutely no support from anybody. So that money that was supposedly going to come to get his deed back to his house was used for living expenses this summer. So that puts us in a position of looking at the fourth piece, which is the cost that we've spent, not my administrative time, but bills that have been paid, whether it was serviced by the sheriff or whether it's town attorney time or whether it's just paperwork in general that we actually incurred some costs. So we added all that up and we took out the 5,000 and Capstone has a request now to help him pay the debt to get the deed by August 31st, $10,000 and set, 10,000 set, about $10,000 even. We don't know that answer yet, but Jessica at Capstone has been really good. We have twice a week conversations to make sure things are good. moving forward. And yeah. so we hope that it so. happens that the town's made whole, Michael gets his deed back, and they're going to set, like gonna set him up with two long-term things. <laughs> One of our concerns is we get even and then repeat. Stay right. even. <laughs> so, weatherization for the house, it's, very, it's not well uh, contained right now. We, water comes in from rain and wind blows through and stuff like that. And the uh, job uh, voc rehab is going to connect with him uh, through Jessica. So hopefully he gets some access to some services so he can get a job back, which he says he wants mm -hmm. to do. So I, a job back, yeah. Yeah, so I think we're, I think we're on a good track. The only thing we're waiting for right now is Capstone's, I think it's called moving forward grant program. They have that they help people get over the big hump and then try to put the system in a place to get them stable. Yeah. Exactly. So a bunch of resources being put into it, but it, we're both crossing fingers this week that Capstone meets later this week on their grand committee, whatever, we get positive. And then we'll quickly get him in here to get his deeds transferred and closed by the end of the month, if we could do it. So that's the update on that, but I wanna let you know that might be concluded by short order, hopefully. Yeah. It stays yeah. positive. Thank you for taking on that gigantic project and it was all new to me services i don't know anything about it except that yeah. he just looked like he needed some help he wasn't otherwise yeah. going to get yeah that's good dave's been up there but mm -hmm. the same thing can... well i reported it to ron the first time ron reported it to this lady to well i'm yeah 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 anyway, i'm glad so with that and some other I'd like to propose a brief executive session to talk about what I talked to you about mm -hmm. saying for somebody. We should go into executive session to do that. So moved. Second. Okay. Well, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Pay to Twenty-seven dollars an hour, and effective July first. The week of July. the week of July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that paycheck that that goes into. Yeah. Okay. Second. Second. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? Anything? We're all set. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? That was a lot shorter than the conversations we had, wasn't it? <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Now, I guess if there's anything else, move to adjourn. So I'll move. I'll move. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay.